this is where my life belongs. We, so for today, I want to do some questions so that we can wrap up sequence and selection in terms of the control structures before we move on now to loop and isolation. So we're just going to do some questions. Here we have <clears throat> some pseudocodes. It says write a structured algorithm to prompt the user to enter the age. So these were the questions that were online. Enter the age of four of your friends. The algorithm should allow the user to input their ages, find their average age, and print it. So here we have our sequences, a sequence type of algorithm, because it is asking you just to do your basic input, processing, and output. All right, so first thing we need to have, we need to have our algorithm name. So our algorithm name is going to be average age. And I saw where some persons were following the, the format, some persons didn't. Um, so after average age, we need to have our declaration. So what variables are we going to use now? So we need four different ages. And I found that persons were using one variable name to hold the four ages. Now, you can't have one variable unless it is an array. And we are yet to touch array. But unless it's an array, you can't have one variable storing four different values at once. So because you're accepting four ages, you need four different variable names. So I'm going to have A1, age two, A3, and A4. And then the variable name, which is going to store the average. So those are our variable names, followed by the body of our algorithm and we said that is signified using start and stop and we indent away from start right so the first thing we're going to have is our instruction to the user so we're going to ask them now to enter <coughs> we're going to ask them to enter the four ages so we're using right open bracket and here whatever text we want to display later on in our program we must enclose that in quotation so we are going to give clear, clear instruction so that is enter four ages and we could split this up in four if we wanted close quotation close bracket followed by our read statement so now we are going to use the same variable names here. And that is one thing that I saw with the, when marking the quiz that I gave online. Um, persons had variable names here at the top, but had different variable names here. Now, once you move on to program implementation, that is going to give you error because it's going to tell you that the variable is undeclared. So we have to use back the same variable names. So we are going to have here A1, A2, a3 and A4. So here now we need to calculate our average. So we have AVG and AVG is going to be equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. And I need to put that in brackets divided by four. Now note that this in itself is incorrect because what the system, and if you are to put it in a calculator, what it's going to do, it's going to divide the last number by four and then it's going to add A1, A2, and A3 to it, but that's not what we want. We want to add these first and then take the total and divide it by four. So that's why we are going to bracket it off.
So here, after it is that we calculate the average age, we need to output it. And we use the same right sequence, so that is right. Open bracket. In quotation, this is the part where it normally says output using suitable labels, which means that you need to tell what is it that you're outputting. So you have right followed by your open quotes. Then you're going to have what is it that you're outputting. So average age is close quotation bracket and your variable name, which is AVG. Then we need to close the body with stop. And that's going to be the algorithm for that question. All right, so far I understand what you do, but the declaration is basically, let's say read. No, the declaration okay. is the list of the variables that you are going to, that you're using in your program. Oh, okay. Right. Then the input, the input is your read statement. But for you to do the read statement, you have to give instructions to the user, which is considered as output. So the part which has enter, enter four ages here, that's output. But the read A1, A2, A3, A4, that would be considered as your input because you must ask for the information so that it may be inputted into the system. We clear? Yes, miss. All right. Okay. So moving on to the second question, write a structured algorithm to prompt the user to enter the price of two different pay-per-view movies. Calculate the amount due and output it with the following message. Output it with the following message, amount due to CVM TV Limited. All right, so what we need to consider now, what is it we're going to take from the user? We're going to take the enter the price of two different pay-per-view movies, calculate the amount due and output. All right, so that now is going to be a sequence again. So what is going to be our algorithm name? Go in the comment section, tell me the algorithm name that we're going to use. All right, then set television. All right, good. We're going to use that. What am I spelling? All right, good. So somebody else now, do the declaration part. How many variables do we need? Okay. All right, variables now. Four variables, Colin. All right. Three, Shakir. Mm, one, two, three. All right. Three, Shakir. Good. So we need the first pay per view. So we need price one. So that's P1. And we need P2. And we need the AMT due. So those are the three variables that we need for this question. All right. Then we need the body of our algorithm that start. Good. Then no. All right. So instruction to the user. Comment section. What is it we're going to write? So we have write. And we're going to have ent oh, open quotes, enter the price of two, because they're telling them that's two price of one, pay-per-view movie. Close quotation, close bracket. Then we need our read statement. And again, we said whatever variable name we have at the top, that's a variable name that we're going to use. So. We can't go put no right here. So so here we're going to have read P1. Read P1. Same variable name as what we have at our declaration. Read P2. Then now the amount due, which is AMT due, is going to be equal to P1 plus P2. Then now we need to output. And it says that it gave you the message which you are supposed to use as your output. So it's not what you want to use. So we're going to have write, open bracket, 
open quotation. So it says here, amount due. And we write exactly that. So that's amount due. It should be two. But let's write exactly what's there. Right? So that's the text that will come up. But we need to output down the value. So we need to take this very variable name here. So that's what we're going to have. And that's going to be AMT due. And then close bracket. Then our algorithm is finished. So we need to close the body. And that is stop. Good. Let me see your questions. All right. So moving on now to question three. All right, so write a pseudocode algorithm to ask the user to input the name of a student right there, the marks he or she received in a set test, the worth of the test. Good, so that's going to be our input three. I found that for the most part, and I could see that one person did the question and then pass it around because the person was asking for three things, the name of the student, the marks, and the worth, but had only two variables um, there. Then it asks us to calculate the percentage mark received by the student and print it with suitable information. All right, so what's going to be our algorithm name? Student info. I'm going to change it to student percentage. All right. All right, so how many variables do we need now at the declaration? Right, four. Right, four. So we need the we need three for the input and one for the percentage. So we need name. So we're going to have name. Then it says the marks received, so that's marks. Then we need worth. And then we're going to calculate percentage. Yeah, percent. All right, so that's going to be our declaration. So these are the variable names that we're going to use. Followed by now the body. So we have start. All right, instructions to the user now. So I'm going to break this up into three instead of using um, just one. So here, enter student name. Read. We use the same variable name, and that's name. Then next instruction, right? Right, I left off the quotation here. So here now we need to enter marks received. So now we're going to read mark. Oh, marks. We have to use the same thing. Next one, right? <coughs> So now we need the worth of the test. So enter the worth of the test. Close. All right. And that's going to now be read worth. Good. So after we read the worth, now we need to calculate the percentage. And guys, the bracket off was the problem. So percent is going to now be equal to so let's do that now. So it is marks divided by worth, close bracket, and then multiplied by 100. And for our output, we use write again. And guys, remember that you, could use, you can use print, you can use output, you can use display, it's just that for the transition, I am, I am saying use write. So percentage received, percentage mark is, now we write percent, close bracket. And that's going to be the end now. And this is your body, which is stop. All right, good. So that's this for this question. All right, so that was question three. All right, question four. So we're moving into some if statements now. So it says read a number. 
So we're reading one number here. It says print the message. Number is greater than five. And what's our condition if the number is greater than five? Otherwise, just print the number right there. So let's move into that. What's going to be our program or algorithm name? All right, so Colin say number greater than five. All right, so moving on now, declaration. How many variables do we need? All right, so we need only one variable. And it's just the number. It only asks you to enter a number. There's no manipulation of the number, right? So we're not adding five to it. We're not finding any sum or anything. We just want to enter the number and find out if the number is greater than five and output that. So here at declaration, we're going to have one variable name. So your declaration, and we're going to use n. Moving on to the body. So we're going to have start. All right. So now we need to give instruction to the user as to what is it that we want them to do. And so we use the word write, open brackets, open quotes. So we're going to have enter a number because that is what we want them to do. Then we need to store the number in a variable. And we're using the same variable name here. And that's n. Good. So moving on now, what type of if statement is this? It's not, it wouldn't be a if then, it would be a if then else. So if, yes, so that condition is correct. So if n is greater than 5, then what do we want to happen to us? All right. So here it says that if the number is greater than 5, we need to output number is greater than 5. And that's that. So we just have right. So number is greater than 5. Close quotation, close bracket. All right. So we're moving on to the else aspect of it. So once this, is, this condition is true, then it's going to execute this. However, if the condition is false, which means that the number is less than, we want it to output just the number itself, right? So we just use write. Ooh, right? And if they just output the number, so here, we're just going to have n. Close bracket. Once you have an if, you must have n diff. Good. Oh. And then now, your program will end. So we're going to have stop. All right. So let's stop. Let's test this algorithm now. Guys, what is going to be the output if 7 is entered? Yes, Ben, number is greater than 5. Good. Yeah. Good. So, Shaquille, remember this is the condition here, you know, which is N. So, if 7 is greater than 5, it's going to execute. This condition is going to be true. So, it's going to execute this part here. However, if N was 3, this condition here, so it would have if 3 is greater than 5, then. So we know that 3 is not greater than 5, so it would not execute that number is greater than 5. It would move to the next part to output just 3. Right? All right, good. All right, so let's move on to the next question. All right, so here it is asking us to read two numbers, determine which is larger, calculate the quotient, um, by dividing larger by smaller and print quotient here. All right, how many variable names? The two numbers and the quotient, yes. So guys, whatever, the, um, whatever we are requesting from the user, so we are requesting two numbers and then the calculation that is taking place, which is the quotient. Good, all right. So what's the name of our algorithm now? We just decided that I will come up with quotient, all right. All right, declaration. 
So our variable name is no. All right, so we need two, so we need num1. Yes, Shaquille, num1, num2, and what? And quotient. All right, good. QUO. That's what we're using. Then now the body. So that's start. And then instructions to the user now. So the instructions in the comment section, what is it that I'm supposed to write here? All right, no, write enter. All right, yes, Colin. Properly structured. All right, read. What is it we're going to put at read? All right, so it says now calculate the quotient by dividing larger by smaller. So here now we need an if statement because that's the means by which we're going to identify which one is larger or smaller. Good. So we need if, open bracket. So we're going to have if num1 is less than num2, that's our condition. So if num1 is less than num2, good. Divide larger by smaller. We're going to have co. Co would be equal to what now? If the condition is true. So if num1 is smaller, we're going to have num2 divided by num1. Else, so quotient then would be equal to num1 divided by num2. Good. And we say once it is that you have if, you must have end if. Good. And then we need to output the quotient. So we're have, going to have right. So what is it we're output, outputting? Coming to your way in. So quotient is comma and the verb name QUO. Then now we must have our stop and that's going to end the body section. All right, let me go over these questions. We have or the name of our algorithm and the name of the algorithm should signify what the algorithm is doing so here we have quotient because that is what we are finding next part you have your declaration this is where you list the variables that you are using in the algorithm so based on what this question is asking we have three we have three variable names because it is asking the user to enter two numbers and to find quotient so that's it two numbers that the user will be entering and whatever calculation that needs to be done. So, we have num1, that's the first number that the user will enter, num2, then we have quotient. Good? After that now, we move on to the body of our algorithm. Good? So the body is normally enclosed in start and stop. Then after we start the body of our algorithm, we give instructions to the user. The instruction to the user is telling them what is it that we want them to do. So here we have write, enter two numbers, because that's what we want them to do. When the user enter those two numbers, now we must store them in variable names. Now we can't have one variable name storing two numbers, hence we need two different variable names. So we have num1 and num2. Um, at the end part here, all you need to do is tell what is it you're outputting. Yes. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean the abbreviation because you could write something else. So here now, we store the values. Now to find the quotient, it says that we are supposed to divide the larger by the smaller. Good? So we needed a condition for that. So we write an if statement. So we're saying if num1 is less than num2, then. All right? So let's, 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 let's make this practical now. Let's say the user entered... Um, the user entered 5 and 10. Good. So if the user enter 5 and 10, 5 will be stored in num1, 10 will be stored in num2. We're saying here, if num1, which is 5, is less than num2, 
Then what do we want to do? We want to take num2 and divide it by num1, which is 10 divided by 5, and store it in the variable called co. Good? Good. Store it in the variable called co. Now, if this was the other way, where the user entered 10 and then entered 5, what would happen is that this condition would be false. Good? So it wouldn't execute this instruction right here. It would execute this one where num1 is divided by num2. Good? All right. So once it is that you have an if, you must have an end if. I remember based on the last class, we said that, we said that each if statement is a door. And once it is that you, you enter into a particular room through the door, once you are finished, you must leave and close the door. And that's just it. So once you have if, you must have end if. Good. Then the question did say that we are to print the quotient. And that is what we have here. So we have right quotient is the variable name that we are using so that the value may be enter, um, outputted. So what you would see on your screen is quotient is, and then you would see two. Not the word co, but you would see the number two because 10 divided by 5 would give you two. All right. All right. So moving on to the next question. So it says, read two numbers, find the product and sum. So we have two numbers. We're going to find product. We're going to find sum. Check whether product is bigger than sum. If the product is bigger, than, um, if the product is bigger, print product is bigger. Else, we're going to have product is not bigger. Right there. All right, so how many variable names are we going to have here? Two numbers, product sum, yeah, four, a four, a four. All right, so what's the name of our algorithm? All right, bigger. <laughs> oh, Jesus, bigger. All right, so we have 10 minutes again. Um, when the time runs out this time, I'll do the other questions as a part of this. Um, so it would be a part of the video. All right, so decoration time now. All right, so variable names now. N1, N2, pro, and sum. All right, N1, N2, pro, and sum. All right, next line. Moving on to the body. Oh, Lord. All right, so instructions to the user now. Yes, Colin. What's next? All right, good calling again. All right, what's next? What's next? Mm -mm. No, Ben, the if don't commit. You can't have the if because the if statement is checking whether the product is greater than the sum. All right, so we're going to calculate pro and sum. The pro is equal to, yes, Wayne, good. All right, yes, Wayne, Dalon, good. And then sum is equal to N1 plus N2. You guys are on a roll today. All right, so now what comes next? The if come next, but we'll structure the if statement now. Alright, so Dalan. Yes, Dalan. Alright, yes, Colin. Good. Alright, Shaquille. Yes. So if pro is greater than sum, then, alright, what did it say we're supposed to do? Product is bigger. Alright, yes, Carl John. All right, else? <laughs> Proud of you, Kaljan. Proud moment. <laughs> else? All 
All right, so the else part now, product is not bigger. All right, good. All right. Good, Shaquille. End it. All right. Then what now? So there's nothing else. What comes next? Let's close off the body. Yes, Colleen. Shaquille.